Can you believe it? I can't. Hello. My name is Dan Finnerty. Pause for applause. Thank you. You guys, welcome to Off the Top. Yes. We're going to need a couple things before we start. Somebody's middle name. Anybody? Lynn. Sounds great. I love Lynn. The street you grew up on. Anything. The street. Doodle Town sounds wonderful. Uh, Lorraine it was, right? It's Lorraine. Uh, and the place you were born. Kalamazoo, people love it there. You guys, it's so exciting. I want to welcome to the stage the pride of Kalamazoo, Lorraine Doodle Town. Oh my goodness, how exciting, how is everybody doing tonight? Fantastic! I am Lorraine Doodletown, I come from Kalamazoo, you can call me Lynn if you want, I don't care, you can use whatever, use my nicknames. I'm glad you're here tonight, we're going to sing a bunch of songs, I'm going to jump right into the first one here, of course, it's the one you all know, the one Phil Orr is playing right now, it's my favorite song, it's our first cut off our third album, you know it well, it went to number 17 on the charts, and it's called, it's called Be True to Your School, that's what it's called, Be True to Your School, not that one, not that one, it's a different one, it goes something like this. You know, I've grown a lot since then, but I can still remember back when I went and went and went again to that old school of mine. You know what I'm talking about. It was the coolest place to be. But we had this bad rivalry with those cats across town. You know they're the fools. I always said you got to always be true to your school. You got to be true to your school, right? I am so happy to be here. Thank you so much. Again, I am I am happy to be here. And you can just, you know, being from uh, Kalamazoo, I'm sure. Anybody else here from Kalamazoo? Is there any? Yeah, we got some Kalamazooians. Fantastic. I'm glad you're here, too. Listen, this hard part's on me tonight. All you have to do is sit back, relax, and just remember this. Uh, if you have doubts inside your head, you're 17. I get it. Remember what I said, if you want to 
be seen as cool no matter what a party to go to just remember be too true your i pledge allegiance to my just remember be true to your school be true cool yeah thank you very much oh my goodness me i'm so glad you're all here tonight thank you so much for me that's phil orr on the piano you should know that first and foremost <laughs> phil i am uh, first of all i'm so glad I'm so glad you're here tonight. I mean, I don't know what else is going on in the entertainment industry, but Phil was on strike for the last, like, three weeks. And uh, we resolved that, which is great. It was sad to see you picketing out in the heat in front of Joe's Pub. And I'll be honest with you, the AI Phil was not as good. So I'm glad you're here. Just a couple extra shekels in your pocket. Doesn't matter to me. It's all good. So uh, thank you for being here. Thank you all for coming. How many people is this their first time at Joe's Pub? Yeah. You know what? I'll be honest with you, mine too, and I'm glad you found the place, because I don't know about you, I usually play that, um, I can't remember the name of the place, what's up, the, um, what was the president that got um, Lincoln, uh, Lincoln Center, that's what it was called. <laughs> I usually play, that's my spot, you know, and I, I told my agent, this time I said, no, let's do something, let's do something downtown, he said, like what, like, like midtown, I said, farther. He said, like 14th Street, I said, keep going. He said, how about like around the village, East Village? And I said, East Village sounds good. How about like, but not a big place, like a, like a pub. And he said, I got it, Dave's Pub. And I said, you know, Dave and I have beef. <laughs> so uh, he said, how about Joe's Pub? I said, no, Joe's Pub, I love, I love that place. It's great. And I said, but make sure this time, I don't want to do it like, I want to do it when the weather's iffy, you know, when it's like, <laughs> You know, if it's gonna rain or not, and, and let's do it so when the subways are really rumbling so people can feel we're in the city, you know? That's what I'd like to see. And, 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 cause what I really, and it said do it at seven, not later. I want traffic on a Friday night at a peak, right? And, and I said, and do me a favor, leave one table open right here. That one. I want that one open. He said, I can do all that. And that's what he did, and I'm really glad he did because it's just, it's so great to be here. And I, because I wanted people who wanted to be here because, because, thank you. I mean, because I, I know, you know, everybody seems to know, you know, Lynn Googletown, the person. But, you know, who knows Lynn Googletown, the man, you know? You've seen the performer. I want you to know me. So we're going to take the next, what, three, three and a half hours and tell you all about. <laughs> The story of my life. Take your time, wait, staff. It's going to be a long night. Um, so, I mean, how do you start a story like this one? How I got to be who I am? I think, I think you got to start at the beginning. You got to start in uh, in Kalamazoo. What part of Kalamazoo? Where did you? What school did you go to in Kalamazoo? Who was the Kalamazoo people here? You lot. You you came from the lying section of Kalamazoo. <laughs> I know you people, yeah. I came from the more truth-telling side, but you know, I remember you from the 7-Eleven. Um, you know the one. So, you know, I think I, you gotta go back. You know, Phil, would you give me a little memory music, please? So Kalamazoo, Kalamazoo, what do I remember about Kalamazoo? Well, Kalamazoo was known for a few things, for those who, who know it, and... Um, it's known for a few things. It's known for, it's known for bicycles. Uh, it's one of the big bicycle makers in the in the country. You didn't know that, did you? No. Uh, it's known for uh, uh, Barbie core. Um, you know, hardcore Barbie people. They're very excited this week. I can tell you that right now. And they're known for rollerblades. Yeah, rollerblades. All these people rolling around dressed like Barbie. <laughs> you know, it's one of my favorite things about them. I don't know if you, do you ever rollerblade, Phil? Do you ever rollerblade anywhere? Not more than once. No, not more than once, yeah. Well, they gave up on the bicycles for rollerblades. They strapped them to their feet. Anyway, there's a whole story about it. I won't get into it. 
And by the way, this is the truth, and this is not the lying part. I wouldn't do that to you people. Um, but here's a little song about rollerblades. Sometimes it's summer, and all you want to do is roll around for days and days and days. But you can't ever get balanced on a bike with just two wheels. Get yourself a pair of roller blades. I remember being seven years old and <laughs> sitting on my bed the day before Christmas and I just, all I wanted, all I wanted was a pair of roller blades. And I, I looked up and I prayed to my fairy godfather. You all had one, right? And I said, please, fairy godfather, that's all I want. And my fairy godfather said, you may someday get rollerblades, but you may not be ready yet. I said, why not? He goes, because once you find yourself a balanced individual, then you can't just stand on two feet. You can roll. Thank you, fairy godfather. I hope someday I'll get them. So remember that you go out and it's not just for the gays. <laughs> they're for everyone because they're rollerblades. Thank you. Ah, Peoria, Kalamazoo. I loved it. I loved it. Well, you know, I, uh, it was hard for me growing up in Kalamazoo because if people weren't working in one of the wheel factories, bicycles, rollerblades, uh, and you weren't really into Barbie core, you had really nowhere to turn. And uh, I just, I knew I wanted more. And I just remember being in, uh, in school and I just, I just knew I wanted something more out of life. And, uh, there was a, a, a song about, uh, you know, when you want something, you want it with all your heart. And, and, and you know who, who's really good at, at songs like that was Jason Robert Brown. He wrote a whole musical about it. And um, I, I'd like to sing the title song of that musical for you, <laughs> which is called Travel Before Your Golden Years Because They Might Not Be That Golden. <laughs> That's what it's called. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's a song about hope and joy and <laughs> taking advantage of life. And back in school uh, in Kalamazoo, I was uh, a percussionist. So I'm going to show, uh, show you a little bit of that in, uh, in this song as well. Sean, if I may. Thank you. It goes a little something like this. Uh, uh, are you ready, Phil? I mean, uh, a one, two, three, four. What's your name? Jem. Thanks, Jem. Jem, I've been trying to tell you something for so long now. Because, Jem, you and I have been together for two long years. I'm thinking maybe this town's too small for the both of us to stay in. We need to conquer all our fears. Jem, I'd love you to come with me so far away before we get too old. Because sometimes things don't go as quite as planned Or at least that's what I'm told And that's when Meg looked me right in the eye And this is what she said to me She said, 
travel before your golden years Cause they might not be that good You please don't understand Oh, travel before your golden years It might not go as it should Come with me to the airport Take my hand So years go by And we're traveling and still We're going all over the world It's just me and Meg And we travel everywhere with our 17-year-old girl. She gets so goddamn whiny. And we can't enjoy ourselves. And Meg said, I'm glad we traveled before our golden years, cause this rhythm really sucks. No matter where I go. Traveling with the teenager is I don't like it as I'm sure both of you and I see us getting on the airplane my daughter whining the whole time look at that volcano and that beautiful museum and she says big deal big deal man I am I am glad we traveled our golden years because this one's really bad Someday maybe she'll grow up too And she'll go to college and move out Then she'll take care of herself And then we'll travel again Both me and you Oh, Meg Turn off the phone So she can't call us me and you oh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I finally did get out because I couldn't stay in Kalamazoo very long. I was like, it's too much. Uh, it was just, I couldn't handle all the Barbie core. The pink was getting to me. I keep this as a memento just in case I forget where I'm from. Just so you see it. Thank you very much. Uh, but I, uh, I finally had to make a big move and I moved, I moved to uh, the big city, Lansing. And... <laughs> Uh, I, I just remember feeling the vibe, the cosmopolitan nature of the place. Hey, um, uh, this is Sam Bevan on bass, everybody. <laughs> Sam, would you give me a little, like, cosmopolitan bass, like a... Ba -doom, ba -doom, doom, 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 doom. That was pretty close. Yeah, all right. Sam Bevan, everybody. Well, you know, Lansing really scared me. I mean, the, the amount of people just crazy over there in Lansing. You know what I'm talking about. Not you liars from Kalamazoo, but everybody else <laughs> knows what I mean. And I remember feeling really overwhelmed, and I, uh, I stopped at a place to eat, a little diner, and I sat at the table, and I said, can I just get a glass of water or something? I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. And they said, what's wrong? This waiter came up to me and said, you all right? I said, yeah, I, I'm, I'm okay. I just, uh, I don't know how to handle myself here in the big city. And he said, well, do you mind if I give you a little piece of advice? I said, sure. And so he said to me, he said, be nice. I said, that's terrible advice, man. <laughs> What else you got for me, man? And he said, spend that money. And I said, that I can get behind. <laughs> Little box of water here for me. Never trust a box of water. That was another piece of advice, but I didn't know. <clears throat> it goes like this. Thank you, Sam.
I went downtown to see the banker. I was feeling like I was out of dough. He said, would you like a loan? And I said, thanks, sir, I would. And he said, whoa, 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 now take it slow. You got to fill this form and tell me something. There's some more information that I need. Are you gonna use this for something useful? Or do you, are you filled with lots of greed? I said, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do with this money. I said, spend that money that you give me. I'll spend that money, one, two, three. I'll spend that money, it will thrill me. Oh, yeah. Come on, man, hand that cash over to me. And so I said, I promise I'll be careful. He said, okay, just sign on the dotted line. He handed me a check and I said, man, oh man. I walked out that door, I spent it in record time. I said, come on, watch me. I want to spend that money that you give me. Oh yeah, I said, spend that money really quick. I'm going to spend that money that you gave me. Oh, yeah. It'll be gone, Mr. Lickety Split. Let's break it down. A one, two, three. ba da ba da ba da ba da I went downtown just the other day and I saw my friend who was coming my way. He said, hey man, do you got some cash? I said, I might, but I'm not giving you my stash. He said, come on man, let's do this again. I said, okay man, follow to the ATM. I got out some money, I gave it to him and he spent it before it begins. I said, spend that money that I gave him. He spent it fast. I said, spend that money really quick. He spent that cash. I said, spend my money. That's the real thing. Oh, yeah. Give me cash and it will be gone like a split. Spend that money. It's gone. Now that was it. Very much. Thank you. Sean Dixon on drums, ladies and gentlemen. This is Sean over here. Oh my goodness. Well, I didn't stick around Lansing very long, but I'm uh, I'm glad I did because uh, you know, right at that coffee shop is where I met these three guys. You know, he was the short order cook back there, and these guys were just hanging out playing cards. I think I don't know. They were just busy eating waffles or something. I have no idea. But we. We got together as a band, and uh, since then we've been uh, we've been traveling all over the place, haven't we? We've gone just everywhere, and and uh, I I don't know about you guys. I can't speak for you, especially Sam here, who has a lot of opinions about everything. You can just <laughs> n never shut him up. You can tell. Um, but I, I don't know about you. The place that I I always remember is my favorite place that we've played is is a place called um, it's a place called the Rainforest. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't like the rainforest? And <laughs> music and the rainforest go together hand in hand. Um, you know, I'm gonna come down here for this one now. So Kat, would you, would you do me a favor and bring me up a little light over here, Kat? Help me. There she, hey Kat, how you doing? Um, thank you, Kat, thank you very much. So we're gonna uh, do a little song uh, about the rainforest uh, right now. And it goes, uh, 
a little something like this, Phil. I've been to the desert and the ocean floor as well. I've been to the steps along the east, but there's only one place that's the wettest that I know. We do prefer it most, though many prefer it least. It's the rainforest with all those sounds of nature so far removed from any man it rains there more than any other place imagine it I wonder if you can. You might get bitten by a giant anaconda. But probably not. Get on the river down. Cause nature, man, the rain's all you got in the rainforest. That's the place where we play music, complimenting all the trees. And please do not complain. There's gonna be a lot of rain in the forest. Take me there, pretty please, and watch out for disease. You know, traveling all over the world uh, was very uh, difficult uh, for everybody. And I think after a while, uh, at the rainforest specifically, uh, you all got sick. And I was uh, stuck <laughs> with an indigenous tribe. And uh, I had to learn, you know, it's kind of, I learned a whole new style of music, kind of Paul Simon, I guess, you know, <laughs> experience. <laughs> you know, got to meet a lot of interesting people and learn a lot of different instruments. But it got me in the mind of playing like more native Things and in America, the native instruments more like it's more of a guitar based thing. I think that's how I feel about it, at least. Especially playing here at Joe's Pub, which is known for kind of a folky, rocky type of vibe. And I thought, you know, I put out one album with the um, the people of the rainforest, and uh, <laughs> I I I don't know. I mean, if it's cool, I'd like to play just one of those songs for you now. Is that all right? <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, <laughs> the name of the song, of course, it's a, it was a love song to the people uh, that I was with there. And it was called uh, Mazel Tov. <laughs> when, when, I, when I say we're everywhere, mm, <laughs> Here's a little song um, called Mazel Tov, actually. Um, this song was, uh, was written uh, right, after a, right, a, right after a long uh, stroll in the rainforest with a few of the uh, denizens of the tribe. Um, and, you know, they were inviting me to share in their, in their wealth and their meals, and I, I was just, I was feeling very grateful. And it's a song about gratitude, really, more than anything else. You know, I was put in the mood of a 
I was sort of in the mood, uh, it felt like a cloud, you know, like the rainforest, the clouds settle. And I kind of felt in that moment around those people like I was a cloud and had settled with them in the rainforest. I'm sorry, one second. Uh, thank you. I'd uh, settled in the rainforest to be amongst them, but not permanently, you know. It was one of those things where I was only going to be there a brief time and I was going to share in their knowledge and nourish them with mine and the moisture that I brought. And, <laughs> you know, I, and I, I played this song uh, a number of times around the circuit, uh, especially up the Hudson Valley and the areas of places like Beacon, home of Pete Seeger, and uh, other places that uh, down the Hudson that uh, folk music really grew its roots. song about gratitude, but it's also a song about <laughs> the joy of being amongst the others, you know? And, uh, you know, being from Michigan, uh, having traveled all the way to the Hudson Valley for this purpose, I did feel amongst the others myself, and uh, it was a very different experience. Anyway, it's mazel tov. Uh, it's a song about a man who uh, spends his days in contemplation. It's a song about meditation and it's a song about a song about love and how you keep uh, keep the faith when you're far from home. It's a song about the song about joy and peace. It's a song about bringing peace. <laughs> Mazel tov goes like this. One, two, three, four. I'm not gonna do this song. This is a terrible <laughs> oh, that was a terrible idea, I'm sorry. Terrible thought. It actually wasn't that good a song either, so you're not missing anything. Um, but, you know, I, I sincerely felt like when I was amongst those people, there was a sense of love that I, I, I felt and connected to. And I, I don't know, that was just me. I don't know if anybody else here has been in love. Uh, I've never really had that experience. Is, is anybody, are there lovers in the audience? Is people like, <laughs> people, people love each other? Yeah, so, uh, well, and I'm sorry, what, what's your name? David, and, and you're with Margie. 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 You, how long have you guys been in love? 25 years. Oh, that's so great. I mean, I don't want to burden you, but can I ask you a couple questions? Is that okay? Great. Actually, um, David, uh, why, don't, why don't you, can you come up here for a quick second? I just want to talk to you. Just. <laughs> this is David, everybody. Da David of David and Margie. Um, if you know them, you know them well. Um, <laughs> but I don't know them, so I'm going to learn a little more. David, um, so wh where did you meet Margie? Let me just ask you that first. We met before. There was things like Tinder and stuff like that. There was actually stuff called dating services. Oh, okay. And that's, that, that, that's how we met. And we actually met by accident. Oh, it was an accidental meetup. Okay, how did yeah. that happen? Well, again, with the dating service, you have to pay and they give you quote unquote introductions. Well, I had run out of introductions two years prior. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, oh. So, so this was, how, how did that accident happen? It just, so, so somebody decided, ah, we'll just send yeah. this guy. Her last name was Goldberg, my last name was Cohen. Close enough, send it in the mail. We and are everywhere, we I'm are. telling you. <laughs> So what was the what was the draw? What was the connection that you felt with her? What was about Margie that you felt was special besides mm. that you were ran out of introductions? <laughs> I, I I don't know if I could say that. <laughs> no, anyway. Do your uh, best. Okay, I guess you I got I got to do the G-rated version then, right? You don't have to do anything. Oh, yeah, she, she was Joe's pub. She, she, oh, that's true. She had a very sweet personality. Okay, that's sweet. Mm. Tell us the truth now. What else? <laughs> she, she had great legs. Great yeah. legs. Okay. Now, where did you go on your first date? Uh, we went to Ruby Tuesdays. A classic. <laughs> and uh, what did you? What, what do you remember about that? Anything? Um, again, it was just kind of, 
you know, we were having conversations mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we're from Washington, D.C. Anybody else here from D.C.? <laughs> And th there's a little town uh, j just to the north of D.C. called Frederick. Um, ba basically, uh, you know, it it's the kind of town where, where, where you see... I'm sorry. <laughs> we have a night, you're, you're right? Three and a half hours, right, Phil? <laughs> anyway, my, my, uh, the typical town where you see a lot of Confederate flags. So Confederate flags, very nice. So my... <laughs> My, my opening line was, hey, what's a nice Jewish girl like you doing in Frederick? There you go. That's a good one, and it worked. All right, two more questions for you. What is Margie's favorite thing? Hmm, probably her cat. Okay, and when did you know you were in love with her? Um, probably within a couple of months. Within a couple of months. There was, it was a slow crawl. Um, Fair enough. No, that's great. All right, David. Let's hear it for David and Margie. Wow, that's quite the story. I, I, I'm going to try to follow that someday. I'm going to do that exact. But now that there are apps, who knows? Could shorten the whole process by four to seven minutes. Anyway, the... What, what I'm really excited about is you met this guy earlier, and he's the greatest love song uh, specialist that I've ever met, and that is Dan Finnerty. Can Dan come back to the stage, please? Dan. <laughs> Dan Finnerty, everybody! Thanks, I'm usually asked to leave by now. No, so. no, please! Now, uh, Dan, you, you and I go back, we, we go back way back, way back to Kalamazoo High School. It was great. Uh, and uh, we were in the uh, show choir there. You were, yeah, a star, as uh, well, you are now. You know, yeah. I, you know I taught him everything he knows, mm -hmm. uh, and then he's been teaching me ever since. And uh, there was one song that you and I sang coincidentally. It was crazy. It was a great song. It was called out. Margie. And... Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It was really weird. I'm so it's so what weird. What are the odds? Here. What yeah. are the odds? Uh, Phil, do you remember this song? I actually do. Oh, let's see. Phil remembers it too. <laughs> Perfect. Let's sing that song right now. It goes I love like this. this. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh. Smelling burgers and fries. Burgers and fries. Yeah. That's what she likes. Girl, you know I've been thinking about you quite a bit. He's been mm. thinking a lot about you. <laughs> and I think you're all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wonder if I could come over for a little while <laughs> and see if I'm allergic to your cat. Oh, meow. Mm -hmm. Is it my turn yeah, to sing? Go. I forgot this part. I was lost in fucking David's eyes. And Margie styles me. Whoa, Margie. Margie, Margie. Margie. She looks as uncomfortable as always. It's all right. I'm so glad you were introduced to me. Whoa. What it be, and she's yours eternally, unless you don't want her anymore. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's probably a good point. Yeah. I mean, everyone's Dan, free to leave whenever they want. Why don't you take this part here? This what? little chatty part. Oh, the chatty part. Yeah. <laughs> so there I was out in DC, or like surrounding areas surrounding I like, areas i was like a i don't know how you say introductory coach for training videos this clown walks in he doesn't know what to say i'm like no. say whatever you want man say whatever you want david tell me what you said again that's right we cannot repeat it oh, oh, let's go to ruby tuesdays some bacon and eggs. Oh, I love that shit. I'm going in Goldberg and just a sweet pair of legs. Oh, Margie. Oh, 
Girl, do, do it, it in a place like this. Goodness me. Thank you, David. Thank you, Margie, for sharing your story. <laughs> and thank you, Dan Finnerty. What a what a talent. What a talent. Come on. Come on. I uh, I gotta say, that's a very inspiring tale. I I I find I it sounds so easy what happened to you guys. And for me, love has never been easy. Love is complicated. You know, I don't know if you've had this experience too, but for me it's it's never been a simple thing. And and um, you know, no one writes better songs about the complications of love than and Stephen Sondheim, I think we can all agree. And um, he, he, years, years ago, long before he passed, we, we, uh, there was one piece that he wrote that I guess he didn't want, and he th must have crumpled it up and thrown it out the window, and Phil was just walking by his apartment, <laughs> crazy, in Turtle Bay, and... It hit him on the head and he unwrapped it, ironed it out and brought it to me and we've been singing it ever since. It's a, it's a pretty terrific song and uh, it's about love and the complications thereof and it's, uh, it's called, it's called, uh, it's called a Craigslist Missed Connection. <laughs> As uh, you know, he was years ahead of his time, <laughs> Mr. Sondheim. And um, we're gonna do uh, Craigslist misconnection for you. Now, before we start, I'm just going to let you in on, on just a little little secret here. Uh, a little behind the scenes. This is, uh, there, it's been said there are four basic positions in, uh, in a cabaret. There is uh, standing with mic and stand, standing with mic and hand, seated with mic and stand, and seated with mic and hand. Let's see if you can determine which one this is tonight. <laughs> Uh, Kat, can we get the uh, lights down just a, a little bit here, just a little lower, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Okay, too low, back up, back up, back up. Okay, yeah, that's, that's about it. Great, thank you. Stephen Sondheim, Craigslist misconnection. <laughs> I saw you on the A train. You were just coming from the gym. You had a bag in your hand that was filled with water. Was it water? Do you think you'll be on the A train again, my friend? I would like to see you on the train going uptown. I've got to go to a doctor's appointment on Thursday. This Thursday, maybe next Thursday, and every Thursday, will you be on the train again? Please be with me on the train. Please be with me on the train. Come off the train and maybe at 42nd Street, we'll switch to the E train. Switch to the E train. Go across town. Go and over, up and over, and you'll be there getting on the B. Next to me, will you be? Thank you.
Well, <laughs> well, speaking of love, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I didn't find love immediately, and I still wasn't finding any success in my career. Lansing and everywhere else was not open to me. But I did find myself finally moving to the big city, Detroit. And <laughs> when I got to Detroit, yeah, you know it. And uh, what's, your, what's your favorite bar in Detroit? Midtown. Which one? Midtown. Midtown Bar. Right? Well, I used to work there. And, <laughs> you know, I used to work there. I was just like tending bar. And I was just, my dreams were just leaking out of my brain, it felt like. There was no reason to pursue anything. And uh, I actually took a break one day, and I... Uh, I went outside, just kind of licking my wounds and uh, wondering what I was going to do next. It was about midnight. And all of a sudden, this woman comes around the corner to the alley. And I'm just sitting on a crate. And she comes up to me, and she's wearing this long dress, and she's really beautiful. You heard of Angelina Jolie? <laughs> well, well, so had she, and we had a long chat about that. <laughs> We both agreed, like, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, like, killed it, you know, I was like, boom, from there. But we both liked her earlier work, and we got talking about that, and then she said, wait, wait. I don't want to be alone tonight. She handed me the cigarette, and I said, because <coughs> I didn't smoke. I had no, I had no idea what I was doing. And that's when she leaned over to me and she whispered these words in my ear. She said, bacon is better tomorrow. <laughs> Sean Dixon on the drums, ladies and gentlemen. Sean. You want to pop a, maybe a little reverb on for this one? What do you think? Hello? Hello? Perfect. <clears throat> it's almost 12.30. The breakfast has been One martini dirty And maybe shoes of suede You made me eggs Oh, that's such a sorrow Throw them out with the toast, save the bacon. It's better tomorrow. Sean Dixon, everyone. <laughs> this too shall pass. Well, when you're hungry, life is like a box of chocolates. Golly gee. Scooch over, scooch over. Potato, potato. We'll fuck that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> Everyone in New York is hot. That's not how it works. Nuremberg. <laughs> Whoopsie whoops. Strike, strike. Moose Jaw Canada. Moose Jaw Canada. A Moose Jaw Canada. A Moose Jaw Canada. 
So do what you have to beg, steal, or you borrow. Get some bacon, heat it up, take it out of the pan, put it into the fridge, go to bed. It's better <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sean Dixon. <laughs> Can we get a little uh, round of applause for your bartender, Daryl? <laughs> Daryl, would you do me a favor and send me up a, a beverage of uh, something uh, like bourbon -y and a glass with a, some ice cubes? <laughs> bourbon on the rocks, basically. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to tell you, th that was uh, my introduction to love with that night. And by the time I woke up, she was gone. So was the bacon, for that matter. Everything. <laughs> Didn't even get the bacon. Nothing. Uh, nothing. So, you know, I was trying to figure out what to do next with my life. There was, just felt like I had to give up at some point and uh, try to figure out exactly what was gonna happen next. And uh, my, oh, wait, I think this, is, this might be it. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Cheers, Jake. This is Jake, this is Daryl. Thank you so much. It's real, it's not iced tea. Um, so, I thought maybe I'd just head home again. I don't. I don't know. What, what? What did your dad do for a living? He was in the Navy. He was in the Navy. The the Royal Navy. <laughs> yeah, the Royal Navy. So was my dad. Um, <laughs> what? What rank? He was uh, chief of the flight. Chief of the flight. Yeah, my dad too. Actually, it's interesting. <laughs> maybe they knew each other. We'll talk later. Um, yeah, my dad grew up in England and yeah. chief of the flight and all these things. So, uh, you know, he thought maybe I should go do that. He was like, maybe you should go be chief of the flight in the Royal Navy. And I, I said, maybe, I don't know. And I thought about it quite a bit. And uh, here's, a, here's a little song about that. Phil, would you give me a little? Um... Some days after work, I'd head down the street. Didn't have to go real far. Kick open the door, say hi, take my seat at my favorite dive bar. One time I saw this guy sipping on some drink. I said, hey man, is that guy insane? He keeps looking and staring at the sky through the roof light, hoping to spot a plane. And he said, my man, I was in the Royal Navy, the chief of flight, you know what I mean, man, that was a wreck when I stepped off that deck and I stopped serving the queen. Oh, I 
insane. But I tell you now, I used to work. I used to work for the Royal Navy. I said I could land any plane. I, I wish I could tell you what it means to work for the Queen. I graduated without a stain. Working for the Navy, the Royal Navy was for me. Thank you. Thank you. Well. Phil, would you give me a little, uh, Sean, would you give me a little, thank you. I did not join the Royal Navy. What do you know? I decided I had to pursue my dream one more time. I knew I had to get to New York City. And I found, I found online, I found a, 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 a listing for an audition. And I went out for that audition and I got that part. It was the lead role in a broad, an off broad, an off, off. It was, it was in the Holland Tunnel. We did the show in the Holland Tunnel, <laughs> down that way. They were doing construction, so it was closed off on one end, and we were on the southbound lane. But doesn't matter. I was there, and I invited everyone I know to that show. I invited everybody from Kalamazoo, the truth tellers and the liars. I invited all of them. Everybody from my old school, everybody. And I said, why don't you come and see me in this show? It's my big moment. It was more of a reading with staged reading, but it was still me. It was still all me the whole time. This was the name of the show. The name of the show was Shit Happens. <laughs> the, uh, the songs from Shit Happens included Airplane. Toilet. Stinky. Good day, mate. And maybe go to a Blue Jays game. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do a medley of these songs from Shit Happens for you right now. Airplane, I'm flying my airplane. I fly it all over the place. I fly up in the air. I fly my airplane. Taking off, sun. Soon we're landing. We travel all over the world, the northern, southern hemispheres on airplanes. I'm glad I got my pilot's license. I can travel where I want to. No one here can stop me now. I hope that we don't shoot down this airplane. What is happening? One engine is not working. The other engine's crapping out. I guess we're going down. I'm going to glide into the jungle on my airplane. Going down now. Do you have a toilet? I could really use one bad. I know the plane has crashed, but is the laboratory working? I'm not smoking, I promise, in the toilet. I just have to go, I have to find a place to go. Can you please help me? Somebody help me. My legs are crossing and my stomach hurts. Please, somebody tell me where to go. I see 
you there and I understand you need to find yourself a can. I can help you, sir. Just follow me. You can go right here behind this tree. I'll stand right out here and I pinky swear that I won't say if it's stinky there. You gotta just do what you have to and I'll be here to protect you. No one come around. This man's got his trousers down. Just squat right there. I'll make sure that the coast is clear. Good day, mate. This is my land. You've landed and crashed here in Australia. What are you doing behind me, tree? That whole area belongs to me. This won't be a good day, mate, I swear for you. I'll introduce you to me kangaroo. Who'll come over there and box you quick. Pull up your pants, cover your ass, and zip up your... I'll tell you what, I flew all here. I flew all the way from across the globe to be here. Yeah, what does that get me? Yeah, peeing on my land. No, come on, man, I, why don't you come and visit me? I'm from Toronto. I'll take you to a Blue Jays game. What the hell's a Blue Jays game? Is that like Australian rules? No, it's like baseball, like cricket. More like that, you swing a bat. Come on with me, I'll take you to a Blue Jays game. Just let me go to the bathroom here. I promise you it will all be fine and that's when we became friends and you know what they always say they say shit happens no i don't think they meant it that way that's when i put down Wow. Well, as you can imagine, it was an unbridled success. In the start of my career, the reviewers were there. And of course, the reviews came out the next day. And of course, the first review in the New York Times said, hey, don't shit where you eat. That's what it said. <laughs> and the song went like this. Ready, Phil? One, two, three, four. It said, go. Let me tell you a secret stuff. Can we, can we just, can we stop for a second? Just stop for a second. Sorry, sorry Sean. Um, I'm sorry. I made that all up. That, that didn't happen. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm aligned with the liars of Kalamazoo now. I, uh, I'm so sorry that happened. Uh, the truth is, I, uh, I, I really had a hard time. It uh, did not go well. We actually uh, we didn't uh, finish the first uh, the first uh, shit number. Uh, <laughs> pulled my pants down, and the cops were there. Uh, got shut down pretty quick. Uh, everybody laughed. Everybody was really embarrassed, uh, you know, and uh, everybody went back home to Kalamazoo or wherever. They came from, and my uh, my cast with me, they were shocked because they didn't think I was actually gonna poop. And you know, <laughs> I am I I am method. I can't. <laughs> so they all they all just went into they just they just went home, and I found myself standing in the middle of the southbound lane of the Holland Tunnel, not knowing whether to go to 
Jersey or New York. I, uh, <laughs> so I, I decided to go back towards New York because, you know, why, why just, why go away from the pain, go right towards it, you know? <laughs> so I, uh, I went into New York and I um, found myself wandering through uh, the West Village and over to Broadway and up a little bit up Broadway. Started to rain, not unlike today, and surprised me. And I was hot and sweaty, and I felt like I should just give up. It's just totally give up. And I, s I caught sight of myself uh, right in front of a, uh, a window. It was just it was all dark. And I could see my reflection from the street lamp. And uh, I just thought back to when I was seven, and I remember talking to my fairy godfather. And I said, fairy godfather, if you're anywhere nearby, please, please help me now. And that, and I heard a voice. And it was, uh, it was, Mary Abraham, are you are you my my godfather? What do I look like? <laughs> well, are, are are you carrying your Academy Award? <laughs> no, I'm just glad to see you. <laughs> Should have expected that. Uh, well, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm I didn't, sorry. I didn't yeah. mean to bother you. I just. <laughs> yeah, I know. I get this all the time. I mean, I, I don't carry this because I want people to recognize me. No. No. I carry it for protection. Yeah, it looks pretty heavy. Don't fuck with me. Okay? Yeah. All right. Fair enough. You ever get hit with an Oscar? Uh, no. <laughs> no. Not yet. Uh, <laughs> I have a feeling that might change uh, soon. No. 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 You um, have nothing to fear from me. Okay, well... I'm your fairy godfather. Well, that's so perfect, because I, I need some advice. Do you, do you have yeah, anything to... But do you believe in fairy godfathers? Of course I do. Do you believe in fairy godfathers? <laughs> all right, you gotta believe. Well, I didn't expect you to look like F. Murray Abraham, that's all, but this is perfect, this is great. <laughs> I mean, this is perfect. Could, could you, do you think you could give me some, some advice? I'm at, the, I'm at the lowest point in my career. Yes, and, I can give you some advice. And that's when F. Murray Abraham <laughs> said to me, don't you ever, ever give a fuck. <laughs> I don't know who you people are. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> that's what he said to me. Phil, do you remember this part? <laughs> Don't you ever, ever give a fuck If I'm ever out of luck Reach, always reach very, very far <laughs> Don't give a fuck if it's the moon or a star <laughs> That's amazing. That's a great piece of advice. How do you think I got my Oscar? <laughs> and then he picked I... up his magic Oscar and he waved it three times in the air. <laughs> and the window, the light came on and I was in front of Paragon Sports above Union Square. And right in front of me, was a pair of rollerblades. <laughs> he was as surprised as I was. <laughs> and I knew I could go anywhere. Thank you, F. Murray Abraham, for giving me these blades. Because. Don't you.
Dixon, Dan Finnerty. Thank you all very much and good night. You have a seat. Thank you so much. There are some things you'll never forget. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, wow. <laughs> I can't even say anything. I'd like to say a couple things before we uh, end the show tonight. Firstly, I'd like to uh, introduce the band properly. Sam Bevan, <laughs> Phil Orr, and Sean Dixon. Thank you. I'd like to thank everybody here at the public as well, including Daryl and Jake and Marky and everybody else. Um, I want to thank the fabulous Dan Finnerty, who, for those of you who don't know, uh, Angel Desai was supposed to perform tonight. She got ill at the last minute, couldn't make it. Dan showed up an hour before showtime, and that's the kind of guy he is. So thank you, Dan. And of course, I have to thank the, the man I've enjoyed as a fan and as a mentor, even though he didn't know it. And, uh, and now as a fellow performer, I am so honored. F. Murray Abraham, everybody. <laughs> thank you, Murray. Wow. Uh, the last thing is there is a, a couple of things in the lobby. I, I, I actually recorded an album this year that was, uh, that was based on improvised songs, basically. So the album, uh, I've got cards out there. You can, well, you can stream it on all the major streaming networks, but you also can uh, download it from Bandcamp using a code on the back of that card. For free! For free, I tell you. So grab one of those on your way out. And uh, is there anything else I need to say? I need to thank Beth DeMent for collecting all the cards and being just generally a fantastic person. We're gonna finish with one last song that was written by Leo Tolstoy. He wrote it in English, although he didn't speak a word, and uh, it sounds a little something like this. Ulan Bator deck of cards, an elephant never forgets. Your tickets are also at the door. The universe is rigged in your favor, Rubik's Cube. Fried, you are late, beer queens. Queens. I'd hit that, you got it, ace. If you're bored, then you're boring. Avocado Tempest Fugit, 5 p.m. at Arturo's. Respect, discipline, a mountain, my son, in hallway. Don't look for trouble, you'll find it. Live, laugh, love, heck, yeah. Seven options for kayak in New York City. Croatia, zebra, yellow, Trump's brain. Sex is overrated. What? My depression will not go away. I want to thank the good Lord for making me a Yankee. Dented saxophone, Roosevelt Island tram. Shut it down already on it. Boing, boing, Omaha, Nebraska. Don't let him kiss you in thanks. Curly, try anything once. Try anything once. And slimy, you have to have a swine to show you where truffles are. Panic device. I'm sure you know this, but all work is as will do to the strike. Do to the strike. Keep on moving forward. Sean Connery comes to mind. What doesn't he? The fantastic serpentine. Serpentine! Serpentine! Yeah, Brian is here. Fuck you, pay me! Fuck you, pay me! Honesty is the best policy. What a series litter box. Crazy with the Sif. Audaciousness. If you don't ask, you 